Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to share my ultimate sales dashboard. This is a dashboard in pipe drive that contains some of which I think are the most important reports, most useful reports that help you to understand the data in your pipe drive account and how to improve your sales process. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, then check out the other videos that we have on offer. I talk a lot about how to get more out of pipe Pipe drive, common mistakes to avoid, and if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with Pipe Drive, setting up your account, automating your sales process, or training your team, then click the link in the description below to get in touch with me and learn more about my Pipe Drive consulting options. So welcome to my demo pipe drive account. Here is my ultimate sales dashboard. I'll be explaining each of these. I'll be clicking into some of them and explaining why I think they're useful and, uh, and, and how you can apply them to your business. You're welcome to follow along, start and stop this video if you want to try and recreate these. Or if you're a business owner who just doesn't have time and you'd want someone to just set this up for you, then click the link in the description below and you can purchase our sales dashboard pack. This is an add-on to our services and you can purchase this and our our team can just set up this dashboard for you. We'll do all the heavy lifting so that you don't have to. Now, before I start talking about these reports, I just want to give you a quick tutorial on how to create a report and some of the options that are available. So to create a report, you can click the plus button up here and you can either create a report, which is basically what all of these are. You can create a new dashboard. So if you're on the professional plan, you can have multiple dashboards and you can create a goal. And goals live in a separate area of the sidebar, and these are sort of sales targets or key metrics that you're trying to achieve. And they can actually be added to your uh, dashboard as well, like this one here. So let's start with a new report. And reports can either be activity-based, they can we can track activity performance, things like how many activities were completed or created in a certain period. We can create lead-based reports. We can track things like how many leads were created, converted into deals, uh, lead conversion, things like that. The most common type of report are deal-based reports. So we can track deal performance. For that, that's things like how many deals did we win or lose in a certain time frame? What's our conversion rate? What's our average sales cycle? And uh, deal progress, uh, how, how well or how effectively are we moving deals through our pipeline? And then finally, we do have some useful revenue forecasting and subscription revenue reports that help us to understand our projected income over the coming months based on uh, the expected close date on our deals or if, I have, um, if I'm using the subscriptions feature in Pipedrive. Let's start by just recreating one of the most common reports you would want to see, which is how much revenue did we receive? So this would be a deal performance report. Now, when you create a report, up here in this filter section, this is basically where we set or establish the data that is going to populate our report. So at the moment, this report is showing any deal that was created this year. And our X axis is showing when they were created, split it out by month. And then we're simply on the Y axis showing the number of deals. So if I want to report on how many deals we actually won, first thing I would do is I would change this to show not when they were created, but when did we win our deals? And again, I'll change my X axis to reflect the same thing. So I can see how many deals did we win uh, month uh, every month? I could, I could change this to quarterly or, or weekly if I wanted to, but I'm gonna stick with monthly for now. And my Y axis, I could leave as a number of deals or what would probably be more useful is showing the value of deals. So there we go. I've, I've now got a pretty nice report showing the value of all sales each month. And if I want to, I could segment this into different ways. If I'm on the professional plan, one of the great benefits of the professional plan is I can do custom reporting like this. So I could report on revenue broken down by uh, deal source, which is a custom field in my account, or deal type if I have different types of deals. Or if I'm not on the professional plan, I can, do, um, I can segment by uh, things like the deal owner, here we go, the deal owner. So this is the sales person that closed the deal. So how well are different sales reps report, um, going in my account? Or I could even report on things like different pipelines if I have multiple pipelines. Once I'm happy with my report, so I'll just leave it like that for now, I can save this. I'll give it a name. So we'll say deals, deals one. 
I can put it into a section. If I have different sections for different types of reports, I can, I can put it there and I can choose which dashboard I want this to appear on. So I'll save that now. And you can see it's now been added to the top of my sales dashboard. And so that's that's how we create new reports. I'm going to remove this for now because it's not. Uh, we've already got reports like that on the dashboard. So let's look at my sales dashboard now. What I'm about to show you, these are the most, what I think are the most useful reports that you can set up in Pipedrive. So starting in the top left, I just have a simple metric showing year to date sales. And just like I showed in the example earlier, I'm looking at any deal one this year. And I've just changed the report type to show the scorecard. So instead of having a column like I had before, I've just got a simple scorecard showing the total deal value. So that's just a very quick snapshot. How many sales have I won this year? This deals won by product is a similar type of report. Again, deals won this year, again, deal value, but now I'm breaking this down by product. If you attach products to your deals, if you've enabled the products feature in your account, this helps me to understand what products, or in my case, services, am I selling more of? So I can hover my mouse over one of these bars and I can see what product lines and services we're generating revenue from. So that is really useful. And top right here, we have again, a quite a similar report, which is showing deals won this year. And again, I'm reporting on deal value, uh, where before I had the scorecard, that was my year to date sales. If I format this as a pie chart and then segment this by deal source, Again, deal source is one of my custom fields. And because I'm on the professional plan, I can do this custom reporting. I can now see for this year, how many sales have come from different sources like Google, trade shows, Facebook, referrals, and other sources like LinkedIn. This is obviously really useful because it helps me to understand what marketing channels are working for me or what isn't working for me. If I'm spending money on Google and it's not generating sales, maybe I need to cut back on my spend. Moving down the screen, we have an example here of a uh, goal that has been created. So we have this goal here that shows, let's just edit this for a second. For our company, I'm reporting uh, for this year. So from the 1st of January to the 31st of December, we have a goal to generate $10,000 in sales per month. And so once we have a goal based report like this set up, I can see a couple of things. If I look at June here, I can see in June, we've accumulated a total of $109,250 worth of sales. The goal, so where we should have been by this time was only 60,000 because it's 10,000 a month. So by June, we should have reached 60. So I can see I am ahead of schedule there. That's why this green block is higher than that gray trend line, the gray line, that's my goal line. So I'm, I'm ahead of my sales target, which is great. And this big blue block, blue block, <laughs> this is uh, all the deals that I still have open. So that's kind of my potential sales. If I close those open deals, I can actually reach a total of 345K in sales if I close them all. Of course, that's never going to happen. We don't close or win every single deal. That would be great, but it's not always the case. And so there we go on the dashboard. It just allows me to easily track my sales for the year compared to my goal. Moving down through some of these other reports now, uh, I've got a really similar report to some of the previous ones where I'm looking at, again, the deals that I've won this year, but instead of segmenting by product, that was this one here, I'm segmenting by person. So for different people on my team, who's performing better? I've got a really nice conversion funnel here. So this tells me my overall win rate, which is just of all the deals that I create, how many do we actually win? So if I create 100 deals, it's saying here that 25 will you will win. And this is helping me also to understand the drop off in my account. So you can see we had um, $16,000 worth of qualified leads come in, but only 38% converted to contact made. So obviously there was a big drop off there. So this funnel report really helps me to understand um, if there's some kind of weakness in my sales pipeline. Uh, and uh, if there's a big drop off, maybe there's something I can do to improve that conversion. Moving down, I have a report that shows my expected sales this month. So this is just simply showing based on my expected close date on my deals for this month, um, show me deals that are still open or basically not lost. So maybe the ones that I've won or that are still open. And it's showing this month, you should win 25.9K in sales. So that's a nice quick little pie chart I can look at to see what, what kind of revenue should I be generating this month? Uh, in fact, this one here is the exact same. 
it's just a metric instead of a pie chart. Moving across, we've got my average deal value for the year. So taking into account all the deals that I've won, what's the average value? Obviously I wanna be pushing that up and you can see compared to the previous period, which was last year, my average value is up significantly, which is great. And we have average time to win a deal. So this is that deal duration report that I mentioned earlier. So how long does it take to close a deal? 219 days in this case, quite long. Although for some businesses that we've worked with anyway, we've worked with businesses that have very long sales cycles, this actually might be considered quite short. So obviously that depends a lot on your business. Here's an example of an activity-based report. So I can see how many activities are my sales team completing uh, on a monthly basis, whether that's emails being sent, uh, phone calls being made, quotes being sent, proposals sent, uh, using the activities to track what we're doing and what's getting done is a really great way to make sure my team are being held accountable and we're spending our time on revenue generating tasks. Open deals by stage here helps me to understand of all the deals in my funnel right now, where are they? So I can see I've got five in the proposal sent stage. That's probably about, you know, a quarter to a third of my deals, currently just in that proposal sent stage, meaning I need to follow up with those people, get a decision. I've got four in that earlier stage, qualified lead, two in contract sent. So, you know, if I've got a big um, bottleneck somewhere, that's gonna become really apparent on this report. Here's a really useful one, deals lost by reason. And again, there's not much data here because this is just my demo account, but I can see here by Specifying a lost reason when I lose a deal, I can see, okay, we lost one because of bad timing, one was a pricing issue, another one here, they went with a competitor for the last couple of months, or maybe they just didn't respond. So that's a really useful report to use in conjunction with a sales funnel report, because it helps me to understand where in my process am I losing people and why? Is it a pricing issue? Are they going with a competitor? Why aren't we winning these deals? If you add a subscription or a payment plan to a deal, a bit like this example here, you can generate a report like this, which is a payments due report. So I can see here, what is my expected cash flow based on any recurring payments, which are subscriptions, or payment schedules that I've set up. A payment schedule would be for maybe a project that I've, I've um, quoted for that's being billed for in installments. So this is helping me to understand uh, that expected cash flow based on those subscriptions and payment plans. Moving down, I have a couple more reports related to conversion. So this is showing um, any deal that I've closed this year. Uh, so a deal that is either won or lost. And it's helping me to understand my conversion rate at different times in the year. Because I've got my X axis down here to show when they were closed and then just simply the number of deals. So I can see, you know, sort of around 50%, slightly better in May, 100%, 100%. Again, this is just sort of dummy data, so it's not super accurate. But this helps me to understand um, if, I'm, if I've had a really good month, if conversion was really high, or if conversion was really low, I can sort of ask myself, well, what did we do differently? What worked well that month? What didn't work so well? Here's a really useful report, again, uh, that's reporting on conversion, but this time I'm reporting uh, based on deal source. And because I'm on the professional plan, I can report my custom field data. And so this helps me to understand how do different sources of deals convert? So when I get a lead from Google, it's converting at about 57%, whereas a referral is converting 67%, which is even higher. Trade shows converting pretty high as well. Facebook 100%, or well, it's only one deal there. But you can see here, it's helping me to understand what sources of deals are converting better or worse than others. Of course, if I'm spending a lot of money on Google or spending a lot of money on Facebook and it's converting really poorly, maybe I don't wanna be spending that much money compared to something else. And on the right here, we've got my overall conversion rate for the year. So regardless of source, or a month, it's just of all the deals that I've created, what is my average conversion rate? Now, if you're really paying attention, you might notice this 72% is slightly different to this win rate of 25%. That's because this is specific to a sp specific pipeline, whereas the uh, conversion rate down here, this is for all deals across every single pipeline. So hence the difference there. And finally, we have this deals created this year report, which is just showing any deal created this year, 
again, just the y-axis, the number of deals. The reason this is useful is if there is a big spike or decrease in the volume of deals created, like actually you can see there were no deals created for April, May, June, July, this might be telling me, look, your marketing channels are not, no longer working because you're not getting any deals in this case. Or if there was a big spike in deals created, great, like something worked, whether it was a marketing campaign, but you generated a lot of new deals, a lot of new leads. So that's one that I like to keep an eye on to make sure that I'm maintaining a nice, healthy, uh, consistent volume of new deals being created. And so there we have it. Obviously, you know, you're gonna to wanna to customize this dashboard for your business. You're gonna have your own metrics and goals and things that are important to you. But at a bare minimum, this is what I consider to be the most useful reports inside Pipedrive that you can set up. So there you have it. That's my ultimate sales dashboard. Now, depending on your business, you'll probably want to set up your own reports. You've probably got your own key performance indicators and metrics that are important to you. And there are ways to report on things like commissions. Um, we're working with a client right now where they want to see the quantity of pallets shipped per month. So there's lots of quite cool reporting like that that we can do. Um, but this is a bare minimum of the kind of thing that's possible to create the most useful reports, I think, that a beginner can set up to understand their sales process better. If you have any questions about anything covered here, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you'd like more help with Pipedrive, setting up or optimizing your account, getting more out of the tool and automating more of your sales process, then check out my master Pipedrive program. When you sign up, you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so that you can connect with me and get help and your questions answered anytime you need support with Pipedrive or you can book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me so that we can take a deep dive into your account, I can show you key features, and I can even conduct group training sessions. And you'll also get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and advanced topics compared to my YouTube videos. So if you really want to master Pipedrive, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.